everyone, it's great to see you on another video. In this one, I'm going to show you how to knit this slipped hourglass stitch. It is a type of a cable stitch, but um, the cabling is actually quite simple and uh, it provides a very beautiful pattern as you can see here. I've knit these swatches in um, worsted weight yarn, but this one with a um, bigger needle, a size 9 needle and this one with a US size seven needle. And you'll see, and, and one in a lighter, one in a darker shade. So that you can see that it actually looks pretty good um, in both shades. Um, this is the right side, this is the, the wrong side. And the wrong side, you can see, it almost has a little bit of this textured effect um, because of the way the pattern turns out. So I think it's really cool. The only thing, um, my only complaint about this is that the work does just like, it is sort of stuck in it, stitch based and so it it does tend to curl on either side if you block the if you block it it should the curling should go away so definitely um can use this pattern and then if you're just making a blanket or something with it then might need blocking you could also add a border on either side and that might help like a garter stitch border that might help a little bit with the with the um rolling let me show you how to do this um slipped hourglass stitch so i would put this pattern at an an intermediate or advanced level, just because it is a 20 row repeat. And there's a couple finicky parts to it when you're doing those cable twists. And so if you're somebody who's been knitting for a little while, um, have tried cable stitches before, or are ready or feel like you're ready to try cable stitches before or cable stitches now, then I think this would be a great pattern for you. Now the pattern is knit on a multiple of eight stitches plus two. So I have cast on here for this demonstration about 15 stitches. I'm gonna go ahead and cast on three more. And I'm just using worsted weight yarn and um, size nine needles for this demonstration. You, and you don't need double pointed, just easier because they're shorter for me to use. So let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, two, four, six, eight, 18. So that's 16, multiple of eight. So 16, eight times two, plus two, okay? You start off with row one, which is the right side row. And the row one, you start off with a purl one. And then a knit one, purl six, knit one, repeat. So knit one, and then purl the next six stitches. Three, four, five, six, and knit one. So that's your pattern repeat for the whole row all the way down to the last stitch. Knit one, purl six, knit one. So here we go. Let's do that one more time. Knit one, purl six, and knit one. And you'll keep doing that till you get to the last stitch. The last stitch you're gonna knit or rather purl. Okay, and that's the end of row one. This is the right side. You're gonna turn your work. Now the wrong side of this pattern for all the rows is identical. And for that, I actually wanna show you this, um, the anatomy of a stitch, right? So when you're looking at a stitch, and let's say this side, you're facing the V's, okay? When the V's are facing you as you're knitting, if this is your side, if the V's are facing you and the bumps or these squigglies are on the back side, then that's a knit stitch. If your work is facing this way, you're knitting this way and the squigglies are facing you and the V's are on the back, then that's a purl stitch, right? For those of you who are intermediates are probably rolling your eyes saying, duh, but just wanna be sure that, that we have this terminology because um, in this next row, the pattern will just tell you that anytime you have a knit stitch, you're gonna go ahead and knit it, but then anytime you have a purl stitch, you have to slip it, all right? So here we go. The very first stitch, you can see it's a V facing me, which means that is a knit stitch, right? The squiggly is on the back. I'm gonna knit that stitch. The next stitch you can see is a purl stitch. I'm gonna slip that with the yarn in the, um, I'm gonna slip that with the yarn in the front. And so bring the yarn to the front like so and slip that stitch purl wise, okay? Now the next six stitches are all knit. So I'm gonna take the yarn to the back and knit 
those six stitches. So really these alternate rows, uh, the even rows are super simple because that's all you have to watch for is um, making sure that you knit, regular knit the, the knit stitches and slip the purl stitches with the yarn in the front. All right, so now the next two stitches are purl stitches. We're gonna slip them with the yarn in the front. So bring the yarn to the front, slip the first stitch. The yarn is already in the front. You don't have to you know, take it around again. You're gonna slip both stitches and then take the yarn to the back and knit. Now, when you take the yarn to the back, do not take it really tight. You wanna leave a little bit of, of little bit, you wanna leave the yarn a little bit on the loose side so your work doesn't look scrunched up, okay? This is kind of similar to mosaic knitting, which I know I haven't done a video on that, but I hope to sometime in the future. So that little float that you're doing, you want to you want to keep a little bit of um, leeway or keep that float a little bit loose, a little bit of fuzz over there. All right. And then again, I have a purl stitch. So I'm going to slip it with the yarn in the front, take the yarn to the back. And this last stitch is a knit stitch. I'm going to knit it. All right. That's the end of row two. You turn your work. Row three, identical to row one. So you start off with purl one, and then the knit one, purl six, knit one, repeat. So I'm gonna speed up through this row and do row four, which will be identical to row two, and I'll meet you all back up at row five. So those are the four rows done. Row five is where the fun begins. So I forgot to mention at the start that because this is a cable pattern, technically you do need a cable needle for this, but fear not if you don't have a cable needle, I'm gonna show you a way to do it without the cable needle. Um, if you have one of these, these can help, or if you have a stitch marker, you could use that, that as well, or you could just use your fingers and I'll show you how to do that. All right, so row five, you do a purl one, and then you do a twist left, a cable twist left. What does that mean? It means that, and I'm gonna show you on this pattern here, whenever our little line is twisting to the left, that's a cable twist left. Whenever our little line here, this ridge is twisting to the right, that's gonna be a cable twist right. So in this case, we're doing a cable twist left. So for that, we're gonna take this, the first stitch, and we're gonna slip it onto a cable needle and keep it, hold it to the front of the work, all right? Now this next stitch, we're gonna purl it. So the yarn is already in the front, you just purl it. Then you put your cable stitch back onto the needle and you knit it. And you'll notice this is how the V that's formed of that knit stitch it'll keep propagating, all right? This is how it's gonna form, the lean towards the left as we keep doing this pattern over the rows. And then, so it's one twist left, and then uh, purl four. So we'll see that one, we'll see that one more time. So purl three and four, just a regular purl four, purl four, and then a one twist right. So the one twist right, we wanna, we wanna get this to twist to the right. So for that, what you do is you take the next stitch and you put that on the cable needle and you hold it towards the back, okay? Now we have our knit stitch that we're actually going to knit. Okay, and you'll see how that V is starting to turn to the right. And this stitch that's on the cable needle on the back, I'm gonna transfer it back onto the left needle and I'm going to purl it. And that's the pattern repeat for the whole row. Twist one left, purl four, twist one right. We'll see that repeat one more time. So here we go, we gotta do twist one left. So for left, remember, stitch onto the cable needle, hold it in the front, purl the next stitch, put the stitch back on the left needle and knit it. Then purl four, And then 
cable twist right. So take your um, cable needle, the first stitch, hold it to the back, knit the next stitch, bring the cable needle stitch back on the left needle and purl it. And you keep doing that repeat all the way to the last stitch, the last stitch you just purl. Now row six, again, you're knitting the knit stitches and you're purling or you're slipping the purl stitches. So here we go. The first stitch is a knit stitch. The second stitch is also a knit stitch. The third stitch I can tell is a purl. So I'm gonna bring the yarn to the front, slip it, take the yarn to the back. And again, leave it a little bit on the looser side. The next four stitches are all knits. So I'm gonna knit, 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 knit. And if you're somebody who likes to know exactly how many to knit versus how many to slip, uh, when you're doing this the first time, just make a note of it for the first 20 rows and then you'll follow the pattern. I think it's just easier for me in the pattern to just say this because uh, once you get going, you'll realize it's really quite obvious when you have to slip versus when you have to knit. So here we go. Here's a purl stitch. I'm going to bring the yarn to the front and slip it. Then take the yarn to the back because the next two stitches are knit. So I'm going to knit one and knit two. This one is a purl stitch. All right, bring the yarn to the front and purl it. Or sorry, I'm going to bring the yarn to the front, scratch that, bring the yarn to the front and slip it. And I've done this too, by the way. That's the one thing to watch for, um, because if you do accidentally purl it rather than slip, just slipping it, then your little, the, the beautiful ridge that forms will get, um, there'll be a boo-boo in there. So you don't want to do that. And then you'll have to undo your work. And so this is definitely a pattern, given that it's a 20 row repeat, you want to have a proactive lifeline. If you're not sure how to put those, I have provided a link in the description field. All right, that's the end of row six. So row seven, you purl the first stitch and then starts the pattern repeat. So the pattern repeat goes purl one and then twist one left. Now, what do you do if you don't have a cable needle? Since it's only one stitch, and if you're knitting with a fairly bulky yarn, I would not recommend this with very skinny yarn, but with bulky yarn, because it's only one stitch, you can actually just let it hang there. I use my octopus fingers, my multiple fingers, and I actually hold on to the stitch with my thumb and my forefinger like that. And then I purl this stitch, and then I put this one back on. Yeah, it's the right orientation. And then I knit it. So that's one way to do it. If you don't have a cable needle, um, you can just let it hang loose or you can hold it with your fingers and then and then do the stitch. So that was a one twist left, then a purl two. So just purl the next two stitches and then you do a one twist right. So again, if you don't have a cable needle, this next one, you can just let it hang loose. Um, this one, I'm gonna let it hang loose. I'm not gonna hold it with my fingers. And then you're gonna knit the next stitch. And the stitch is still there. You're gonna take that stitch, put it back on the left needle, and then you're gonna purl it. And ta-da, we did that without a cable needle. Then it's purl two, and that's it. That's the end of your pattern repeat. So a pattern repeat for this row seven is purl one, one twist left, purl two, one twist right, purl one rather. Sorry, purl one, okay? So let's do that pattern repeat one more, one more time. Purl one, one twist left. Bring this to the front. I'm gonna use my fingers to hold it. Purl the next stitch. Put the stitch back on and knit it. Then purl two, then one twist right which means the next stitch you're gonna to hold to the back. Now I'm gonna use these two fingers, my forefinger and the middle finger, and I'm gonna knit the next stitch. Then I'm gonna bring that stitch back on and purl it. So a couple different ways to do this. In the next one, I'll show you how to do it with a little U-clip. Row eight, we do the same thing. We're gonna knit all the knit stitches. So here we go, knit stitch, knit stitch, knit stitch. This one is a purl. I can see the bump over here, the V's on the back side. 
okay? And so I'm gonna bring the yarn to the front, slip it, take the yarn to the back. Next two are knit stitches, so knit, knit. Next one is a purl, yarn to the front, slip, yarn to the back, and then knit, 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 and knit. And that's a purl, slip, knit, knit, and a purl. So slip and knit, knit, knit. And that is the end of row eight. Row nine, we start off with a purl one. And then, so you always start off with a purl one. That's your sort of edge stitch. Then you do purl two. And so that's your pattern repeat. Purl two, one twist left. So again, this one comes to the front. Now, if you if you feel nervous about just leaving it hanging or it's awkward to kind of hold it with your fingers, if you have one of these, you can just put that right there and purl. And that's gonna hold your stitch, put that stitch back on. And knit. So that's a one twist left. And now we immediately do a one twist right. So this is where our two twists are gonna now join together, okay? So for the one twist right, again, you can take this, put it on here, hold it to the back. Oop. It helps to also, um, if you wanna take it all the way around, you could do that and leave it that way. And then knit, and then bring that stitch back on. And purl. So that was your one twist right, and then purl two. And that is the pattern repeat for the whole row all the way to the last stitch. So let's see that one more time. I'm gonna purl two, twist left. I'm just gonna use my fingers. It's just easier for me, it saves me time. But like I said, the safest and best way is a cable needle. Sorry, I'm so used to doing pearls after this that I didn't realize this is one twist left, one twist right. So here we go. One twist right. They are back to back and this is where the two twists meet. And that's it. And then pearl one and pearl two all the way down to the last stitch. The last stitch is just gonna be a pearl. And that's the end of row nine. We're almost halfway there. And you'll notice that those twists have now joined together. And here we go. We do our little friendly, simple relaxation row of knit, 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 until we notice a purl stitch. Oh, there we go. There's two purls. So yarn to the front, slip, slip, yarn to the back. Knit, 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 one more knit, and two purls, so slip, slip. Out to the back, and we knit the rest of the way, because they're all knit stitches. Okay, and that is halfway done to row 10, to row 11. First stitch, always a purl in this pattern, and then starts the pattern repeat. So row 11 um, and row 13, similar to rows one and three, there's no um, cable twists or anything like that. They're simple rows. So row 11, the pattern repeat is pull three, knit two, and purl three. It has started to rain over here and I don't know if you can hear the little pitter patter outside but we are getting April showers, which will hopefully bring lots of May flowers. All right, knit two and purl three. So you keep doing purl three, knit, through, knit two, purl three in this row, all the way down to the last stitch, and the last stitch is April. Okay, and row 12, we knit the knits and we slip the purls. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. First for our knits, this one is a purl. Next one is also a purl. Take it to the back. Knit, 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 knit. And two more knits. Oh, 
didn't quite knit that right. Almost did I knit one below there. Okay, and then two pearls. We slip them, take the yarn to the back, and the rest of the way it's knit. That's the end of row 12, row 13. And for those of you who are intuitive knitters, who already know how this is going, um, you'll, you'll realize what, what ends up happening is we bring these two together, then we let them ride together for a little bit, and then we start um, they start diverging again. So row 13 and row 14, identical to row 11 and row 12. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed up through this part um, just to save some time, and then I'll meet you back up at row 15. So row 15, we're gonna purl the first stitch, and then starts the pattern repeat, which is a purl two. And now we do a one twist right. So we want this, we want this ridge to start diverging to the right. So that's why we're twisting right, which means we're gonna take the, the next stitch, put it on the cable needle or on your little clippy or hold it between your fingers, knit the next stitch, bring that stitch back and purl it. And that's your one twist right. And then you immediately do a one twist left. So take your cable needle, hold the stitch to the front, purl the next stitch, take the stitch to the back, or, or rather take the stitch back on the, the left needle and knit it. And then you do a purl two. So that is your pattern repeat. So let's see that one more time. Purl one, purl two, and we do a one twist left. So take this and hold it to the back. I'm gonna use my fingers, hold it right there, knit it, bring this stitch back and pull it. And then we do a one twist left. So bring this to the front, pull this, take it, put the stitch back on and knit it. And then a purl one, purl two. You keep doing that repeat till the last stitch, the last stitch, always a purl one. That's the end of row 15. Row 16 is the usual knit, all the knits and slip all the pearls with the yarn in the front. That's also a knit stitch. That's a purl. And that's it. That's the end of row 16. Row 17, we purl the first stitch. Let me give myself some yarn here. I'm using a big skein. Usually I use those nice little round little balls of leftover um, skin, but for this one, I wanted to use a, uh, this, this bulkier yarn. All right, so purl the first stitch, which I don't think I've done. Here we go, purl one. And now, so row 17, so purl, now starts the pattern repeat. So you purl one, and even if even if I wasn't looking at the pattern, I know what I, I know what this one wants to do. He needs to keep twisting right, which means I'm gonna twist him right. So take this, hold it to the back, and then knit the next stitch, bring the held stitch back on the needle, the left needle, and purl it. Then we're gonna purl one. Uh, actually, sorry, then we're gonna purl two, and then we're gonna do a one twist left. So again, next stitch comes off, you're gonna either hold it, put it on the cable needle. In this case, I'm gonna be brave and just let it hang. And then I'm gonna pick that stitch back up and knit it. Now, be forewarned that if you pick it up and just let it hang, um, if you tug on it as you're knitting that other stitch, the stitch can come off. So probably the least recommended technique um, to try. All right, purl two and All right, I think I have messed up here. Something seems off. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. <laughs> one twist left and then purl one. 
apologies for that. I'm getting mixed up here. We're on row 17. Okay, here we go. So one twist left. This was my twist left and then purl one. So let's see that whole pattern repeat one more time. So here we go. Purl one, one twist right. Confusing myself here for no reason. And then purl two. And then one twist left. I like the one twist left because they're easier. The yarn is held in the front. Um, the one twist right, the yarn is in the back. So uh, the stitch is in the back. So it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit trickier, I think. And then purl one after the one twist left. Keep doing that till you get to the last stitch. The last stitch is a purl one. And you'll see how it's joined together and now they're diverging, meeting up at the other end. And row 18, we're almost there. If you've stuck with me so far, congratulations. All right, row 18, done. Row 19, here we go. Purl one. Now one twist right, right? So we're gonna take this and transfer. Since it's the last row, I'm gonna do it the right way with the cable needle. Bring it back. And I don't really have cable, I only have two cable needles actually. And I use this for my sizes seven, eight, nine needles. And then I have a skinnier one that I use with my, um, with the skinnier needles. All right, so one twist right, then purl four. One, two, three, and four. And then one twist left. And that's the pattern repeat. So one twist right, purl four, one twist left. So here we go. Let's see it one more time. One twist right. So hold the stitch to the back on the cable needle and knit the next stitch and then bring it back and purl it. And then purl four, one, two, oh, split the yarn there, two, three, and four and then one twist left. So hold it to the front, pull it, take it on back and knit it. And the last stitch is a purl. Row 20, you knit the first stitch, then it's a purl, which means I'm gonna slip it, take the yarn to the back, then it's a knit, a knit, a knit and another knit, actually six knits in all. And then you have two purls next to each other. So we're gonna slip both of those, the yarn in the front, take the yarn to the back. And we have six other knits, four, uh, oh, five and six, and then we have one purl to slip and the last stitch is a knit. And that is it. That is your 20 row repeat. So this pattern does need a little bit of work. It um, needs a little bit of TLC, but at the end of the day, you'll have a beautiful looking sample. So just one last point. When you're done with this, then it's just a regular bind off. So if you have any questions at all on this, give me, um, or, or give me a holler, leave me a comment and I'll do my best to answer it. If you have suggestions for projects with this or, or for other videos, leave them in the comments field. As always, thank you so much for watching and happy knitting.